Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm working with some new to me products in a longer than usual video with no voiceover. So get comfy and let's get crafty. Hey there. So welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. I'm trying something just a little bit new because I wanted to walk through a new to me product. I was watching, oh, in June... Um, a video on Laura Bassett's channel and I'll try to remember to find that and link it down below and it, it was all about a new um, card kit or card making kit from a new to me craft company so this craft company is um, let me see if I can pull this out it's called Queen and Company and they have the coolest thing for shaker cards so this is the under the sea craft kit and it is all about shaker cards and under the sea shapes so and these are the instructions that come with their um, the kit and this kit includes all of this stuff so we're going to go through this kit I'm going to show you a couple of other things that I purchased when I was looking around their website because oh my gosh their pattern papers and their shaker bits are amazing and their kits for shaker cards are fabulous. So, like I said, this is called the Under the Sea um, Shaker Card Kit. So, I'm going to pull this all out, and all of this came in the bag, except for I ordered one extra thing and, and um, stuck it in the bag. So, Okay, so let's start with pattern paper, because you know I'm all about the paper. So it comes with a 6x6 pattern paper pack, and there are um, three sheets of each print, and the pages are double-sided. So you've got a really cute print and then a really fabulous B-side. So just a quick flip through. I love this mermaid. Okay, so my niece calls them mermaids, and we are not correcting her because it is the cutest thing in the whole wide world. So she is all about the mermaids. So super cute prints. Even the B-sides are fabulous. Okay, oh, I love that fishy one. So, so, so cute. Ooh, nice neutral, that gray with the polka dot. So very, very cool pattern papers. And then it comes with a stamp set. Let me find something white to stick behind here. And this stamp set is all a, like, fishing you a happy birthday, you are fantastic, let's celebrate, hope your day is a splash, sorry you are crabby, oh my gosh, sorry, sorry you are fe feel, feeling crabby, sorry, braces and English are a bad combination. Snappy birthday, starfish wishes and mermaid kisses, Swimming by to say hello. I hope your day is jawsome. See you soon. Don't worry, beach happy. Um, fish you were here and wish upon a starfish. Now, so the cool thing about this, their, their stuff, is that they have already shaped foam. Okay, so let me bust this one open and show you what I mean. Like, Okay, let's see if we can even get it open. Okay, so in this foam refill pack, and I added an extra one. So one comes in the kit, and then I purchased a second one. And in this kit, you get two, three, three sets of all of the shapes. So there is a dolphin, a fish, a shell, a seahorse, um, and then you've got a mer mermaid tail, a mermaid tail, <laughs> a mermaid tail, a sand dollar, a starfish, um, another fish, and I'm not sure what this anyway, is. So it comes with three sets of these foam pieces. I don't know if you can see that very well, but they're already cut out. And there's adhesive on both sides. But also in each kit, it comes with pre-cut acetate pieces. These acetate pieces are the same size as the foam cutouts. Let me see if I can find one that's a shape. Okay, I don't know if you can see that very well, but that is the starfish acetate, and it will fit right over this um, foam ring. So let me show you how this foam thing works. So the center is already cut out, and then here you put on a piece of paper, you put your shaker bits in, you peel this off, you put the acetate on, and boom shaker part for your card. So this is what was like blowing my mind. My sister was here and I said, oh my gosh, 
Angelina, come check this out. And um, yeah, and then we didn't play with it while she was here, which is a bummer because she's all about the craft things too. So also in the kit is this coordinating die set. So these dies cut out a piece of like something to go on top of your foam. So like looking here at this crab sample that they did. So the foam cut out, cuts out the little crab and stands them up right. And then you cut out the crab die and it goes out of pattern paper and it goes over the top to kind of hide the um, white part, like the adhesive part of the die cut. I don't know if you can even see that. So like you can pop this back out again. So you would use the die and the pattern paper would be the same shape as that star or the crab or whatever you're talking about, right? Whichever one you're using. So let me put this back in and oh my goodness, I'm gonna lose things. Move this back out of the way. So um, it also includes eyes for the crab and here's the mermaid, mermaid, mermaid hair with the body and uh, the body and the tail. Anyway, there's also the little mermaid bra or shells, whatever you want to call it. Um, so super cool. And they this set, they're all stitched. So there'll be that nice stitching line that goes with them. And as if that wasn't already enough, it comes with a bag of um, things to put in it. So this kit has two shapes. Let me move these out of the way and grab some more white paper. Okay, so this kit has two shapes. I'm gonna zoom in here in just a second so you can see them. Um, so there's these little rock style ones, which are super cool. And then there are these little seashell, super cool shapes. So let me zoom in a little bit and you can see what they look like. So the shells, can you see how cool that is? They are literally little shells, and there's this turquoise color, a yellow color, a pink color, a purple color. These iridescents might be my favorite. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And then this coral color, also one of my favorite colors. And then the rocks, we've got this kind of, um, can you see the shape of them very well? I don't know through the baggie if you can see that very well, but these are super cool. And there's a gray, then a purple, and a turquoise a coral, a pink, and then a light yellow. So these um, are totally meant to be the bits for your shaker cards, which I am so excited about. Like, I'm all about a shaker card. Um, now, one thing I will say is that these foam pieces are a little bit thick. Like, you can see how thick they are. Where's my ruler here? So they're almost a quarter inch thick. So this is gonna be stick it in a box or put it in a padded envelope or hand deliver it kind of card. It's not really going to be, like it might barely be a one stamp card. All right, let me zoom back out because I'm gonna show you something else. So while I was shopping on their website, I looked for some other things and a lot of their, like most of their stuff all comes in kits. Um, but one thing I really, really loved was this um, Sweet Shot pattern paper. And this is all um, ice cream colors. There's not really any um, ice cream prints. They're all um, just shaped prints. Oh, I like that gingham. But um, I really liked this Sweet Shop um, pattern paper. So I went looking through, and their Sweet, Sweet Shop kit was sold out. But what I found was that they had these summer um, refills. Now they're not exactly the same. They don't really coordinate exactly. And um, But this has a popsicle, a flip-flop, and a palm tree. And then here are the coordinating dies. But one thing I think, let me tear this open real quick. I don't see in these dies, oh, well I just ripped out all the pieces, so eh, whatever. So this die seems to be Oh, good heavens. The same size as this popsicle. So it's going to cut the outline, but not the middle out. 
So this die would be good for cutting a background behind your shaker bits, but it's not going to cover up this white, um, like if you look at this ice cream or the popsicle, it's not going to cover up this white edge. So we're going to have to get a little creative about that. So just something I'm noticing there um, as I'm looking at these. But anyway, and so I thought I could use like these two things with that pattern paper. And in my order, they sent me this cute little bag of little pink pearl bubbles. That will make a super fun shaker card. Can you hear that? That would be so fun for a shaker card. And they sent me this. Now I'm gonna to be totally honest, I don't know if this is meant to be broken open and use those shaker bits. They're little pink and coral and green hearts. Or if it's just like um, a logo thing. But let me tell you, like, cause I cannot see any way to open this. Like, I don't know. But I will be opening this and using this. So Queen & Company, if you watch this video, tell me if I'm supposed to break this open or not. <laughs> but anyway, so I have all of these things that I want to make a couple, I don't know, should we make, I don't know how many shaker cards we're gonna make. I'm just gonna make a card, I think I'll start with one and see how long it takes me and then um, move on. And you know, if I do it fast, then we'll make more than one. If it takes me a long time to figure it out, then I'll make one. So hang on, I am going to grab some supplies, like cardstock and ink and adhesive. I'm gonna get everything on my desk organized because if y'all could see the top of my desk, you'd be laughing at me. Um, it looks a little extra. But I'm going to grab what I need to put together at least one card and then we're gonna make it. And I'm gonna do it live because my house is quiet. There's nobody home but the dog and as long as it doesn't thunder, she won't cry. Um, so I'm gonna make it um, like live on mic as long as it sounds okay, and I'm gonna try not to edit anything out. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I want to use the seahorse die and make a seahorse card. Um, I don't wanna really copy that layout, but I'm kind of digging this layout with the scallop circle back here. I don't think you can see that behind this fish. So I think what I wanna do is do a seahorse one, but instead like use this layout kind of sorta, of, but instead of the scallop, I think I'm gonna use like, um, I don't know, maybe a hexagon or a flame circle, something that's also stitched, whatever I have that's also stitched because all of these dies have stitching in them. So I will be using the seahorse die and this is his little um, fin or whatever. So let's grab some pattern paper. Where did I put the pattern paper? Here it is. Here it is. Like I said, if you could see my desk, it would be a mess. So I want to use, um, I kind of like this one because it has little seahorses on it. So that would be a good option for my A paper. So I'm gonna use this as my A paper. And then I need to find a B paper. Let's see. Because this B paper is gonna kind of determine the color of my cardstock as well. So let's flip it over and use, look at the back sides. Um, I don't think that's too much. Um, that one would be kind of cool. Let's use the waves. And then like if you look at this um, card sketch, there's a little bit of a, another pattern in there. And I could use this one piece of that. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna stick this. I'm gonna fold it in half so it will tent right here on my desk in front of me where, you know, theoretically you can't see it and it doesn't get in my way. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this card stock off to the side. Um, so now I need to go through my cardstock and find one that's kind of this color. So. Okay, I could not find a blue that was close enough to that color to not be like super, super different. So I pulled out yellow. I have this yellow. There's a little bit of yellow in this. Um, this is like our A paper, right? And this is our B paper. So we're going to go ahead and make this into a card base. I've got my big, huge Tonic Studios guillotine trimmer. And we're going to trim this down to four and a quarter inches. Okay, so here is our card base. 
Now this one I'm going to trim down to, I'm going to grab my smaller trimmer. I'm going to trim this one down to four. Actually, I'm not going to use the trimmer. I'm going to pull out some stitch dies. Um, because I said I wanted the stitching to kind of all match, right? So I've got my Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies, and I can't remember. So I think I want the largest one in the small stitch rectangles package because it will make it four by five and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go with that. So I'm going to pull out my um, plates. So for Christmas, my husband and Santa Claus brought me the Empress Empress die cut machine, which I am loving. So I'm just going to stick this all the way down here in the corner. And then I'm going to run that through my die cut machine and I'll be right back. Okay. Let me grab my little. I'm making tons of noise on my desk. Sorry, I don't mean to do that. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. I think I zoomed out too far. Okay. I use my little Cricut spatula to pick things up off this magnetic mat because it is super strong. So this I will trim off and keep because I am a paper hoarder. And then I'm going to take this blue one and I'm going to use the same die so that we have all of the stitching, right? Um, and I'm going to send that through my Empress machine. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay. So this piece is actually bigger than we're going to need it. We're going to trim that down, not quite in half, um, to make kind of the, to make a border that differentiates between the, the top paper and the bottom paper. All right, um, trimmer. So you guys are getting the complete reality of how my craft room really works, the unabridged version of how Jenny makes a card. So <laughs> I think this is the piece I'm going to use for the, so I think I'm going to trim it down a little bit more because this is about an inch thick. I want to I think I want to trim it down to like, um, I don't know, I'm going to go like three quarters of an inch, which is really hard on this trimmer. You guys, I have trimmers and trimmers and trimmers. I have my big guillotine trimmer, my little guillotine trimmer, and my Fiskars trimmer. So we're going to go ahead and trim this down to about three quarters of an inch. And then if I decide that's too big when we get to putting it together, ooh, I think that's crooked, um, we can go ahead and trim it down again. Okay. Oh. Okay. So... And while I have my trimmer out, let's cut this down. So this is five and a half inches. I think, see, so that would make it half would be two and a quarter. So let's go ahead and do it at like two and a half and then use the shorter side. So our card is gonna look like this. We have our, our full size mermaid panel down and then we'll have this panel down and then we will have this piece down. And then we're gonna put our seahorse. Um, let me get the seahorse foamy out. What is those? Okay, so here's our seahorse. Oh, I only need one piece. Jeez Louise. Okay. I don't always have my craft room door shut when I'm crafting, so now it is hotter. Well, plus it's like, I don't know, seven o'clock at my house at, in the nighttime, and it's still almost 100 degrees. So here's our sea foam, our seahorse guy. We are going to put him right here. We need a piece of pattern paper or something behind him so that, um, let's see, what is that? Stripes. The back side of the mermaid print is probably big enough if I can find it. There we go. So we will use the back side of this mermaid print for that. Okay. So we need then to bust into our die cuts here and get, and this is going to be a hot mess because they're all stuck down. So it's all stuck to the packaging. Okay. 
we're just going to tear it all off. Okay, so here is our seahorse, and here is our little wind fin, fin thingy. And it thundered, so my dog's coming in, so hopefully... No, lay down and be quiet. Sit. You can be in here if you're quiet. So here's his little fin flipper wing thingy. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out of the pink. And I think I'm going to use the um, blue for his fin, maybe. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So getting the plates for my die cut machine. Let's go ahead and put this one in. I'm putting him on the plate kind of scatty wumpus so there's no, what does Jennifer McGuire call them, speed bumps when I send my die cut through because we don't want speed bumps, right? We're going to start with the, oh my heavens, I'm losing my die cuts. Okay. All right. I do love this magnetic plate though. Like these things don't move. So I do like that about this machine. Okay. Where's my little um, spatula piece again? Okay. Here's his wing and here's his pieces and it comes in two pieces. Let me get a pokey tool. You all, funny story, I could not find this forever and ever and ever and ever, and it was on my desk. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, let's put these back in their packaging. What are these? Okay, we're ready to put our card together. So that was so, I mean, yeah, we're ready to put the card together. Oh, I don't have anything to put behind the starfish, or the seahorse, the starfish, the seahorse. Um, maybe we won't need it. All right, let me find my scoreboard, and let's start by scoring our card base. So this is 11 inches long. We're going to go ahead and score it in half at five and a half, because that will make a USA 2 size card, and it will be a top folding portrait style card. So we're going to go ahead and fold it in half, and use my, my other score tool. This is... So I think before we put this together, we're going to put, our, put this on here, put our panel on our base. We're going to go ahead and assemble our panel pieces because um, I'm going to need to trim the stripe piece off. So I'm going to grab my ATG, this is my advanced tape glider, and I'm using the end, um, the smaller end, and this doesn't have any stitching on it, but we're going to be covering it up with that stripe paper, so I don't think it matters. So let's... Um, Go ahead and put some adhesive on all the sides. And then I'm going to pick this up um, and kind of, you know, liquid adhesive might have been a better bet for this because I would have had a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so here's our card front. Um, I think the three quarter inch is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some adhesive along this and um, line it up on my grid mat and use the, the dots as kind of my straight line. Okay, and then I'm going to pull out a pair of scissors and trim this off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this down on our card base. So we have a lot of colors going on in this card. Normally, I, I well, I, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes I have a ton of colors and sometimes I have not very many colors. Okay, so our card base is done. Let's go ahead and put our seahorse together. And, um, okay, what I'm curious about though is if this will fit in here He's just slightly too small. Huh. But I think it will work on... Yeah, I think it will work. So, first thing we're going to do is take the backing off. So this is just like 
already sticky foam. And we're going to peel the backing off. So this back side is, um, adhe is exposed adhesive now. And I'm going to find the acetate piece. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared of losing these. Not that I couldn't cut more because I have the dies, but you know. Oy vey. Um, yeah. I am so scared of losing these. I should have a little tray or something on my desk to catch them all. Um, dolphin. Although these dolphins are super cute, but I low-key would make it a shark because I am a huge shark fan. Are you all watching Shark Week? Oh my gosh. I am loving Shark Week this year. Um, I did not find any seahorses in there. Let's try that again. Oh, don't lose the crabs. Oh, there's one right there. Okay. All right, let me put these away and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this little adhesive piece down on top of this exposed adhesive or acetate and adhesive. There we go. Um, okay, that is like perfect. Gosh, I love that. Okay. So to stick this little guy on the back of here, I am going to use a little glue. So I'm still trying out this um, Barely Arts glue. Um, oh, I don't know how to do that. I can't glue that on. I'm going to have to glue that down to the page and then put the seahorse on top of it. Okay, well, we'll just do that. More some tweezers. Can't really put glue on the pink side. You could stick it to the acetate because the glue would show. Um, anyway, have you all been watching Shark Week this year? This year, Because I am in love with it. I just, okay, let's be honest. Except for this season, they had one particular cast of one particular show that I don't like because they're grown-up adults that act like idiots. Um, I love Shark Week. And I'm not going to mention the show. I don't remember what season it was, but yeah. Okay, so. <sighs> Y'all... I did this wrong. Okay. But it's liquid glue. This has to go inside our shaker pocket. There we go. And then we'll glue it down. Because, duh. Okay. Let's get that in there. Anyway, I won't mention this, this, the stupid show that I didn't, that I never watched and I didn't particularly care for that cast to be on. The cast of that show to be on Shark Week. But, okay. There we go. I love that. And then here is the top. And there is adhesive on the top of that shaker thing, too. So let's go ahead and add some bits to this. I think I want to use, um, because we've got that turquoise paper down there, I don't want to use that. Let's use the yellow because we have yellow backing paper. Um, so I'm going to pull out the yellow rocks. I'm going to pull out the coral seashells and the yellow seashells and those coral rocks. And I don't know if I'll use these because they're just a little bit. And honestly, I'm not gonna use that either. Um, but I am going to go into my shaker bit stash and grab some seed beads just to kind of fill it up because this is a huge little shaker pouch, right? So I have in my craft room one of these nifty little um, cases and I have in here some more yellows um, these are hearts. I think I'm going to use the star ones. Okay, so we are going to now add the bits to the star horse. Let me find my little triangle tray. Do, 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 do. I lost it, and then I found it, and then I put it where I wouldn't forget it, and now I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we are going to open this little package. And my nails are getting a little bit long for me to work with. It might be time to trim them down a little bit. We're going to add some of those shells. We are going to add some of these little rock kind of fragment pieces. A little bit of those in there. Okay. And then we're going to add some of these yellow stars. These were an old Martha Stewart collection I got from Michaels when they went on clearance. Back in the day when I used to make a whole bunch of shaker cards. All right, so let's dump this in and see if it is enough filling for this little seahorse. 
Now that I've said it's a ton of space, I might have too much in here. I clearly have too much in here. Oh well, we're going to make it work. So, did you guys ever watch um, America's Top Model? And Tim Gunn always said, or was it not a top model one? The one with Heidi Klum where they had to sew the clothes? I don't know what, what that was called. And Tim Gunn used to always say, make it work. Make it work. All right. Oh, I put the... <sighs> okay. I did this completely wrong. Again. Again, I did this wrong. Okay, let's get all the bits out. Okay. We are going to peel this off the back because, duh, it has to go on the top. <sighs> okay, okay. This is real world crafting. I should have followed the instructions. I have got little stars everywhere now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put this guy down on our card because, yeah. So I'm going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive on this just because um, I peeled it off the acetate now, so it might be a little less sticky. I've manhandled it a couple of times. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and put anything behind him. I know that card sketch we looked at had a little um, white piece behind him. I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to put him down on the card base. So we're going to stick him down right here. I keep saying him. I don't know if it's a him or a her or an it or a they, but whatever. And then we've got to peel this guy up. And this has to go down inside there. So he needs a little bit more glue. The cool thing with acetate is that it comes apart. At least right this second. It might not eventually, but right now it comes apart. And we're going to finagle our cutout right down in there. Okay, see, this is making way more sense. No wonder my brain was having a hard time. Okay, and then we are going to dump our little shaker bits in there. stylus here. Yeah, I went a little bit too much on the shaker bits, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> We're just going to go with it. Okay. I don't think those um, shells are going to get down into his tail, so hopefully some of the other stuff does as we get going. Okay, now we have to peel the top adhesive off. So, the top isn't sticky. I don't know why. For some reason, I thought it had double-sided. It had adhesive on here too, but that's okay. We will take this little barely arts glue and put a little ring of glue all around our little star um, seahorse guy, and then we're going to stick this down on top to cover up that white foam cutout because that's the cool thing, right? It, that, that's why it's so cool. Okay. I forgot to put the acetate on. <sighs> okay, again, you're seeing this all in real time, folks. This is how Jenny makes a mess in her craft room. Okay. Okay, so this foam does not have a release paper on the top. I could have swore it did, but I don't know. So the first thing, now we're going to go ahead and take our seahorse dude. Oh, nope. First we're going to put the shaker bits in. And then we're going to smooth them around. Kind of get them all back down in here. Get all those little stars. Sea, sea shells down in there. OK. 
Okay, and then we're going to put some glue around the edge here. Got goobers on my glue bottle. Okay, adding the glue. I kind of am liking this. Um, mostly the nozzle. I don't have any love or hate relationship with the glue itself, but the nozzle is cool. Okay, where on my desk? Okay, there it is. I had to feel around for it because I lost it. Here is our little plastic piece. Let's go ahead and Put that on and use my fingertips and my sense of touch to make sure it's all lined up. Hold it down for a minute. And then we have our cutout that also needs to go on. So we're going to go ahead and put some adhesive on top of the acetate. I'm just following that white foam. So my dog funny story about my dog. We've had this dog, she will be 11 in August, and we have had her since she was a six week old puppy. She was a rescue, and she determined at some point in time when she was an adult dog, like six or seven years old, that she didn't like lightning. So now every time it lightnings, and we're in, you know, it's July in Virginia, so thunderstorms ahoy, right? We're getting some of the thunderstorms from Hurricane Barrel, probably, but anyway, She's all freaking out about the thunder now. You know, she became halfway through an adulthood and forgot about, decided she didn't like thunder. Okay, so that's not looking terrible, right? We can shake that up. Um, the little bits don't go down, in, or the bigger bits don't go down into the tail, but that's okay, the little ones do. We do have his little fin. And I think because we're putting it over the stripe paper that the, the um, aqua color will work. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here on this edge. Make sure I'm in camera so you can see me because half the time I feel like I'm off camera. And get my little tweezers here. This is one tool in my craft room I didn't know I needed until I got a pair and then I was like, how did I ever live without you? Okay, and I'm just going to kind of angle it up this direction to the top just because it doesn't, you know, hide there. We've got a runaway star here. Okay, so our card is mostly done, right? I think this seahorse needs an eyeball, and I'm pretty sure that one of the dies makes little circles, like right here for the crab, but I am going to instead look through my gems Oh my gosh, they're falling off my desk. So I'm going to use one of these little honeybee gems for his eyeball because I think that would be so cute. I'm going to pull out my little pokey tool because it's a little pointier on the end. And I'm just going to land that right there. Oh my goodness, how cute is that? How cute is that? That is so cute. Now it needs a sentiment, clearly. So where's the stamp set for this kit? Okay. So, which one do we want to put on here? Um, hope your day is a splash. That would be cute. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. We need to bring in my Misty because after all of that nonsense, I am not going to try and brave stamping this on its own. I am going to move my grid. I'm sure I have a piece of white cardstock somewhere here on my desk. Look at that. I do. <laughs> okay. And then we are going to, we decided to do, I hope your day is a splash, right? I hope your day is a splash. So I'm just going to stamp that right there in the middle of that piece of cardstock. Close my misty lid. And I think I will use VersaClair ink because I've not used this stamp set before. And this, this almost always stamps perfect the first time out the door, even on cheap stamp sets. And these are not cheap. I'm not saying these are cheap. I'm saying like on the Dollar Tree, the Michaels branded ones, you know, the old ones. Okay, I did not push that down. There we go. That is so cute. Um, 
Let's find a die to cut that out with. Do I have any? Here's my Fiskars. We're just going to bring that in. We are going to... Okay, the cool thing about this Fiskars is that line, that wire in there. It's called the wire guided trimmer. And you can see exactly where you're cutting, even on white paper. So you know exactly where your cut line is going to be. Okay. I'm going to trim the sides down too. I think I'm way off camera here. Sorry. Like I said, my desk is a mess. All right. So here's our little um, sentiment. Sentiment. And I think I want to... It's going to have to overlap because it's kind of big. The question is, do I want to back it with like... No, because it's... Uh, I can do that. Do we want to put... Nope, nope. We're just going to leave it. We're just going to leave it. So I have got to put some foam behind here. And you know what? I'm going to use the cutout of this... Um, the inside of this seahorse because why not? What else would I use it for, right? Okay, so we're just going to um, grab a pair of scissors as my mother sometimes called it. Um, my phone is probably because we're having thunderstorms. I'm probably getting weather notifications. So the end of this, we need to have it on this end. We are just going to use some of the foam the negative part that we didn't use. I'm just going to trim that down because why not? Now, how far do I want to overlap it? That is probably good enough. Okay, so then we have to put um, a little bit of adhesive and a little bit of adhesive and where I put my tweezers down at. Okay, so we are going to snuggle that right into there. Oh, perfect. All right, let me put my pin in my glue before I lose the pin because I need to get a pin cushion or something out here. Okay, the only thing I have left to do on my card that I do on all of my cards with colored cardstock, you know, colored bases is add some white paper to the inside because it is way easier to write a note on white paper than it is on colored cardstock. And um, gel pens and I, well, we have a love-hate relationship. I love them and I hate to smear them. So that is it, except that I feel like it needs a little more bling out here. And maybe a little bit of foam underneath that little fin. I keep trying to call it a wing, but it's a fin, not a wing. So let's take a piece of this foam. I'm not going to worry about gluing it down to the background. I'm just going to slide it underneath there on the sticky side up. And um, there, that won't get smashed off that way. Okay, um, do we bling up the edges or not? I think we should. The question is with what? Okay, in my second tray, I have this yellow sequin mix. So let's use that. Okay. Something to open this with. Because even though I regularly say my nails are tools, they're supposed to be jewels, not tools, right? All right, let's put some sequins in there. And then grab my glue again. And this um, weird little, the lid doesn't stay on. I don't know if I like it or not. Okay, we're going to take this iridescent one here, and we're going to put it, um, there we go, down here on the blue. It does not want to lay down. That's right, I'll make it work. And then I've got this yellow one here that we could put up here, and another yellow one up here, and another yellow one up here. Maybe we'll put that one down there. Nope, I don't like that. Let's use the yellow ones. 
Let's use all the yellows. Put one down here. It's also got some of these little flat yellow, not quite shiny things. Nope, don't like that either. Let's just use all the shiny sparkly things. Okay. So we've got three up there and two down there. We're gonna we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna Tim gun it. We're gonna make it work. Oh this is not my favorite pokey tool. This was a gift. It's not my favorite. Um I don't honestly know if this one's my favorite either because I think they stick to this one as well. Come on now. Big old drop of glue. Oh, can you hear the thunder? Can you hear my dog freaking out because it thundered and she heard the thunder? Oh, doggo, you're fine. So, funny story while I'm putting my sequins on here. Uh, when I was growing up, we did not have animals in the house. And having an animal that lives in my house is such a such a stretch for me. When I was real little, we lived on farms and ranches, and so animals had a job on the outside. And this dog, I swear she's half cat, she sleeps all day long, right? And then wakes up when there's thunder. I don't know. She's a good girl. I'm just not used to the whole, no, lay down. You're fine. You're okay. You're okay. Lay down. I'm not used to the whole shh, animal in the house thing. She's worse than my kids making noise. Okay. I think we're going to call it done. We got a little bit of bling on the outside. We got a little bit of shaker card on the inside. We got a little eyeball that looks super cute. I'm going to put these away before I spill them all over the place because you know I will. All right. And that is the first card I made with my Queen and Company. What's the name of the stamp set or the secret? Under the Sea Shaker Card Kit. Um, seriously, go check out Queen and Company's website. They have the cute, they had a farm one. Like, I could have easily spent hundreds of dollars um, when I was looking at their website. I limited myself to a little bit, not hundreds. But cutest stuff, and they have the cutest shaker bits. Oh my gosh, so go check them out. Go check out Queen and Company. Um, and I will try to remember to link Laura's web um, video down below as well. And here is a little photograph. We're going to zoom in so you can see some of those sequins that we added to the card. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I know it's longer than normal. I just thought I would try something new. Um, couple other videos here I think you will like. I've also added that subscribe button. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave me a comment and tell me if you like the videos longer or shorter and have a really fabulous day.